A very good morning once again and uh, welcome to the Kickstarter League of Morning Art and TV. We are now going to dive into our topical discussion and opposition alternative budget that was uh, read just a few days ago by the leader of opposition in parliament, the Honorable Matthias Impuga. We shall be asking the question, is it feasible? We shall also be talking about the recent NRM caucus meeting, the resolutions and the discussions and of course what happens thereafter. We shall also be dissecting some of the aspects regarding the Iron Sheets inquiry and the probe that is supposed to find out exactly who did wrong and just how some people's privacy, peace was disturbed by a consignment of Iron Sheets making their way into their homes. That is where we are right now with regard to that issue. I'll be introducing my guest very shortly. We shall also be expecting another guest, but that shall be coming a little shortly. Let me just give you a preamble. The leader of opposition in parliament, Honorable Matthias Impuga, unveiled the opposition's alternative national budget for the next financial year, 2023-2024. The 49 trillion shillings tranche under the theme, Rethinking Uganda's Economy, a human Human rights approach to resource allocation was delivered on Friday and according to the opposition the budget will take on the human rights approach uh, targeting spending on sector priorities which directly impact the common person. The proposed strategic areas are financial prudence, accountability, value for money through various reforms in the Ministry of Finance, a promotion and modernization of agriculture, improved preventive health care systems among others. Is there a ray of hope. And the NRM caucus that convened last week, what was discussed and what's bearing, what bearing it has on uh, this nation. And of course, uh, joining me for that discussion is the spokesperson of the NRM uh, caucus, Alex Brandon Chintu, Honorable MP for Kagoma North County in Jinja. Many thanks for joining us uh, this morning. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well. It's a very bright morning, Monday, mm. so it's a very well one. Yeah, we come on the backdrop of uh, a weekend that was uh, full of so much that we can chew on, including aspects that affect us directly within the country and, uh, of course, across uh, the region. Later, I'll be introducing a guest as, and when he comes in, we are expecting the Secretary General of the National Unity Platform, David uh, Lewis Rubongoya, to join us so that this discussion can be as balanced as they should be and that uh, we'll be able to get the best out of it. But let me begin with the Honorable Alex uh, Brandon Chintu to give us a preamble of what the discussions were during the caucus meeting and what resolutions were made and what's the way forward. Please, if you don't mind, let's go through the very, very significant aspects of that meeting and the backdrop upon which that meeting was called. Um, first of all, the meeting or the caucusing that was there over the week, mm. it's mandated and it's legal by our rules and procedure within the NRM Parliamentary Caucus Constitution. Yeah. Which mandates the chair of the caucus, who is the government chief whip, to have such frequent meetings in the line of interaction, update, and getting to know what's happening down there within, with, at the level of legislation and also within our constituencies. Mm -hmm. But unlike the previous parliament, uh, the 11th parliament, they have we have never had a meeting that has been called without the national chair of, of, the, of, of the NRM in the country. Mm -hmm. So that drew mixed feelings within the people. A lot of questions were asked. But it was very nice for them to know that our constitution mandates us that every month we should have such interactions. A uh, quick one, um, in the previous elections or campaigns, mm. NRM made so many pledges at the national level, that's at the president's campaign, and within our constituencies. Yeah. So as the biggest members within the party and, and, and within the parliament, we are mandated to follow up government business. Mm. And you know the caucus uh, is also over-supervised with the lead of government business, who mm. is the, the, the prime minister now in this case. Mm. And we work together with the government chief whip. So it was very important that we have an update. We have so many programs. We have so many people from the executive. Now these are the ministers that are running government programs. Mm. And these members of parliament needed to be updated 
and also it will help us to do our oversight work and follow up and probably we can have very good priorities when we are appropriating money as members of parliament. Um, we have resolved formally mm. now that we shall be having every month uh, these caucus interactions mm -hmm. and also uh, I was telling you earlier about the pledges and uh, members of parliament irrespective of political affiliations mm. they act as the lower government they are always approached and when things even that they can't do they feel mandated to do mm. the other day I had a discussion with one of my friends who was asking why are you members of parliament doing work that is meant to be by government and I told him we are part of government mm. because this other arm of legislation is part that makes up uh, the three arms of government okay. but it can also help us to know what is best and also equip us with the best legislation within Parliament. So this was the meeting we had. We had an, an update and we also looked at what are the priorities. In Uganda we are always um, in active politics but what else can we do? For example we have a program that has really been uh, initiated, the Parish yeah. Development Model. Mm. We need also to extensively discuss uh, with the minister that is in line. I'll give you a sub-regional level that we had in this meeting. I come from Busoga and in our area, mostly, we, we have farmers that have engaged in sugarcane. So we're also looking at a region, and we have, in Busoga, we have, I think, only two or three members of parliament from the opposition. Mm -hmm. But how would we take lead in terms of uh, poverty, uh, kicking out poverty, and also try to, to look at the most recent things that can help. So that was the caucus, and we shall be having it every month. Mm. to make sure that we update and also help and to listen to our members of parliament. As you quickly look there, mm. we had an opportunity to have people to discuss, this time not to listen, mm. but also get views so that we can have better, better legislation within this, this, this time. All right. There was an issue you spoke about earlier. I'll just uh, help uh, clarify on one of the aspects that continue to uh, confuse the average Ugandan. When somebody says government, they mean the parliament, that's the legislative arm. There's also the judiciary and, of course, the executive. Now, what you usually mean when you say the government, the average Ugandan means the administration, the executive, usually the one that is responsible for rollout of policy and uh, implementation of what the others, uh, especially the legislative arm, um, do. So I think that is clear. You are part of government as a member of parliament. You should be able to tell your people too, especially when you come face-to-face uh, -face in many of the meetings. But just as you ended this submission, you spoke about the aspect of listening, that this particular caucus meeting allowed members to speak up and it's not a case of <coughs> going and listening uh, to either the chairman of the party or the top honchos speaking to you what does that mean going forward is there an opportunity for the caucus to be an assembly for progressive discourse not to lay out how things are going to be done especially towing the line um it has not been always listening, listening, mm. but there are some interactions that really need to listen in certain cases. Mm. Um, like I told you, the chair of the caucus, who is the government chief whip, is mandated to have such interaction. But you know, we've been struggling with COVID, so a lot of meetings mm. have been put within close or limited numbers. So this was a very great opportunity. Uh, we actually were a bit disadvantaged because that day we mm. had uh, um, house going on. So we are in between the lines, what do we do? But then we saw that this very interaction was very important because as mm. a caucus we generate issues yeah. from here that can help us to legislate and also give ideas. You know most of the work in parliament is basically done in, uh, through committees and other other administrative and arrangements as it is guided by our rules and procedure in Parliament. Uh, so this time around, we had to give members a lot of time mm. so that they can air out their views because that's legislation. Mm. And as members of Parliament, that's the best way we can do. If you cannot legislate, then where else will you have issues for the people? We are mandated to make sure that we have good policies for this country. And also we are the appropriating arm to ensure that we give money and we give priorities where it's best in service of our people. Mm. So this was very important and I, I would like to promise you in this camera that every month we shall be having such interactions 
and the members have really welcomed it. And the chairman, the national chairman of the party has been mindful about it. Only that uh, because of that, that current we had of, of, of COVID, we would only have caucuses when it's really mandated and basically would have an issue of agents to attend to. So that's what brought in the aspect of listening. But when you look at the previous uh, caucuses, I haven't been in parliament from, mm. for many years, but you look at the answer and also looking back at the history, mm. that interaction, some decisions are made. Uh, and this waves away the picture that people are always thinking that caucuses mm. are basically rubber stamping on, on individual discussions. Mm. But this is now not the case. We have sober members of parliament within the NRM and very patriotic Ugandans to see that most importantly the development ideas that can move this country ahead. You spoke about the fact that the caucus meeting fell on a day that the House was also conducting business. What informs this inability to align the two, given the fact that National Resistance Movement is the leading party in terms of numbers, the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker are members. How is it communication failure that the two are happening at the same time? Not really. Mm. Um, this caucus started at 9 o'clock, mm. but we all do have different challenges and um, it was just coming out of weekend and most of us ran to the constituencies in, on Fridays. Mm -hmm. But it was also very, very important. You know, just like the main house, uh, the printer, the speaker, even if we are to resource, mm -hmm. we are to resource, is, uh, he or she is mandated by the law to call uh, the house as, as soon as it's mandated too. So it was an issue of communication mm -hmm. because basically we also communicate to the administrators of parliament to uh, inform them. And it's not because they are all NRM, but this is multi-party democracy. And any meeting within the caucus is actually within the benefit of the country, because like you said earlier, we are the majority. So mm. we would like to make a, a majority discussions and decisions, but in in the interest that can develop this country. Okay, in the interests of uh, the country, allow me to ask this question. Does the NRM caucus see itself as uh, a, well, Technically, it's a party organ, and it has to discuss party issues, but the tendency to decide on national issues, as though it were the totality of legislation or parliament, is often something that should be questioned. Do you, NRM caucus members ever look at <coughs> some things they are discussing and step away from uh, the confines of the national resistance movement and have a look at national interest? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll give you, I think the very last or second last caucus we had mm. was about coffee. And um, when we walked in the caucus meeting, mm -hmm. no one, because such meetings uh, are in law by the chairman, just call without informing you about the agenda. Mm. And uh, we are fighting so many things, poverty and so many other related issues. So we must have different forms of communication and also curb people's ideas. Mm. So when we're discussing about the coffee issue, the members of parliament, this is a caucus for the NRM. We part ways, we do not agree. We say, no, this is the interest of all Ugandans. We shall not, we had a long discussion with the chairman of the party. And we do not agree, so we are given time to go back and still caucus in the corridors. Yeah. And the, 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 the first thing we did when we come back is to, uh, to caucus with our members of different parties because we are anxious to know what had happened in the caucus. So that was national and we agreed. We had an issue of the bail yeah. uh, that was also uh, partially discussed. People stood their ground. And this is a national thing because we are all candidates. Me or you the other day or so and so would necessitate to have a bail, but if we would say no, we stop to this, this is hindering the rest of, of the interest of the people in this country. So the caucus, indeed, it's true, uh, only that we always stand on very strong grounds that may annoy some other people who are into activism politics. Mm. But we do stand because we are national leaders. We are members of, of parliament in, within NRM, but we come from different constituencies. Mm. And the constituencies have faced different challenges depending on the geographical location. So we do legislate, we do caucus, we do discuss national issues mm. within the caucus of NRM. Looking at the newspapers uh, for the last uh, two or so months, there have been a wash with a scandal revolving around iron sheets. When a caucus of the governing party seats 
and members of the governing party who are within the executive, as many as seven plus, are at the heart of this scandal, did the discussion even arise on how to deal with them? Is there some kind of uh, a standing directive that in case members find themselves, <laughs> I use the word find themselves because this is what the NRM has uh, created, MPs and the ministers finding out that they actually have iron sheets in their compound without their knowledge. Did you discuss this, what is going to be done? I really appreciate the way you bring it, finding. I have a challenge with people are calling it theft. Mm. I was asking someone to it show is. me a reference. It is. I'm only being objective. It is um, theft. Um, well, it depends on how you digest mm. it mm. as being theft. Maybe some people have not reached the stores uh, where these iron sheets are kept, <laughs> number of where I have been. Yeah. And I know, because this is very simple English, I know mm -hmm. there is a difference between appropriation, mm -hmm. allocation, mm -hmm. and then stealing, and stealing, where there is a breakage. So what happened but in this um, particular case? Th these were allocations. Because I would like to challenge you, or to challenge me, if mm -hmm. there is a law in this country that then can, can really point out that these guys are criminals because they are broken here, these allocations are given by, followed by the delivery notes. Like the way if you have been close to the office of the Prime Minister, this is not the first time allocations have been made. But away from that, uh, we, we, we are waiting for the report mm. uh, from our Committee of, of Presidential Affairs. And uh, it would not be really nice to start discussing that in the caucus before we would have a report. Because Parliament also operates we have committees that have powers of the high court mm. we give recommendations we can discuss a report and also adopt and see what we can make amendments in case uh, fairness is not realized in mm. such findings so we are waiting and um, i know very soon uh, probably the week beginning the, this week it, it should be if the committee is ready we would have that report and mm. we shall discuss extensively but as to answer your question in the caucus mm. Um, we had an update of the national issues. Mm. Of course, not formally, because we want to give all these people that are mentioned, including members of parliament, say for the, for the executive people, to, to, to have uh, a proper uh, report and after the investigations. So we do not discuss it as a caucus, because we're still waiting. We don't want to to disorganize the investigation within the committee that is mandated because much as we are members of parliament in the caucus but we have rules mm. and procedure of parliament on how such issues that are contentious are discussed but we are aware and the national chairman of the party is aware about that and the chairman of the caucus within parliament even us because there are certain things you don't want to sing that will make it as a song because it's obvious it's, it's a national issue and it's national news but we want to give the committee an opportunity and I would like to promise you that we shall caucus on such issue and we will pronounce ourselves after you've after fallen you've fallen effectively into the taking the technical stance it is being discussed the probe is going on you don't want to preempt do you see the need for a cultural shift when it comes to leadership conduct of leadership should we really be waiting for probes for people to be told that actually what you did was in bad stead for them to get a sort of a, a, a conscience push something to look at and say what I'm doing how I've done it is not how it's supposed to be done I ought to set a new president so that the next generation of leaders know how to conduct themselves because what we have right now is a case of where all those who are aspiring to be ministers to be leaders understand that there are things you cannot talk to them about especially when it comes to some accountability on how national resources are managed you know leaders come and leaders go but leadership remains but this is not a question of personal being it goes back to our societies. Someone told me one time that some people voted within positions they don't understand. Mm. And even those people that vote for us, sometimes they vote for wrong people. And uh, the other issue is that uh, when you try to assess in Uganda, I had a conversation with someone. I was doing a benchmarking program. Mm. And he asked me, w what is the most economic activity you have in Uganda? 
I was proudly and not ashamed to tell this person that politics is the growing economic activity in Uganda. People join politics not sometimes with the will of service. Some people are into politics <coughs> as an educational process. I have been seeing, watching in the gallery when I was still a university student, some people that now are my colleagues in parliament, mm. but when I was still a student. So people have made it occupational. So when somebody has something wants to consolidate, there will be, of course, abuse. People will have of access of power. So it's an issue of integrity. We need to do a lot of community sensitization, us that are vying for these positions, okay. and those people that are voting for us, because it will help us uproot the issue mm -hmm. of moral, because this is also an immoral thing. You will apply for a job here. You will know that NTV has the following objectives. This is what they want to achieve. But as an individual, you tend, you may tend, to go off from them. So we need actually to look at that aspect. Also, there is an issue of my, um, mindset, because society perceives when you are in leadership, you are, you are accorded the chance to lead. It should also follow with the culture aspect and the religious, because every community that is immoral, you cannot lead. You can't move anywhere. Interesting that the discussion, of course, uh, finds itself filtering into morality. I'd like now to welcome the Secretary General of the National Unity Platform, uh, David uh, Lewis Rubongoya, who is uh, joining us right now. A very warm welcome and uh, good morning. Uh, good morning to you and uh, good morning to the viewers. You found us cruising in uh, this uh, debate. We began with a look at uh, how the NRM caucus will be conducting business forth with, especially uh, it's been resolved they will be meeting on a monthly basis, not only meeting when the president wants to speak to them, but to meet to also be able to discuss and listen to each other. You've had the Honorable Alex uh, speaking here. What is your take on your very uh, first, uh, on his submissions with regard to leadership, but most importantly on whether this generation can set a precedent, a good one for the next? Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, of course, I know that uh, we'll probably go into the budget. And uh, one of the issues therein mm. is uh, the, the traffic gridlock in Kampala, mm. which, as you'll see in our uh, alternative budget, we are, we are proposing a solution for because it cannot continue to be like this. You wake up and you, you really find that you're stuck in one place and mm. you have to jump on a border border or something for you to be able to reach where you're going. Is that a veiled apology for... Uh, yeah, and, and of it? course, and of course, uh, that's why I'm explaining that, uh, you know, Ugandans lose 52 hours mm. due to traffic each year. You can imagine, close to two months that we lose in, uh, in, in, in traffic. So, uh, it's unfortunate and it affects us, of course, in every other, uh, every other sense of the word. Of course, I don't agree with um, uh, the narrative. First of all, the, the you know uh, the legalese and uh, using a lot of technical words to describe what is going on in this country, we have a we have a, a problem of corruption and moral decay, and that is what we need to deal with. Uh, that you have leaders <coughs> who are in love with money, who are in love with positions, who are not in love with the people, who are not in love with the country, who are not in love with uh, what their the call of duty is, and and that is a challenge. If you if you don't resolve that. You can, of course, I had uh, you talking about the Iron Sheet scandal, and we cannot discuss it before there is uh, a report. We have, we have all seen how these things always end. A huge corruption scandal comes up in this country, and that is a song. Oh, we are investigating. Oh, we are doing this. And it goes like that, passes until another scandal comes, even a bigger one, and, and happens, and then uh, the culprits are either promoted or transferred to bigger positions, and it goes like that. So I think what you need to deal with in this country is a question of uh, moral de degeneration, is a question of uh, accountability, uh, leaders being able to know that they are accountable to systems, uh, to the, uh, to, but most importantly accountable to the population, to the people of Uganda. All right. Take us through what the alternative budget is, especially the issues that regard to transformation or diametrical change of this kind of attitude in leadership. Do you tackle that within the budget, the alternative budget? Yeah, one of the things that uh, the alternative budget does is, talking, is, uh, is dealing with uh, the question of accountability and corruption. Uh -huh. You know that you, we lose over 10 trillion shillings in corruption every year. Mm. You can imagine and pause for a minute and think about what 10 trillion shillings can do to a country like Uganda. 
how it can uh, go into the healthcare, what it can do to the education sector. Ten trillion is a third of the budget. Yeah, yeah, you can imagine the kind of money that we lose due to corruption. And, you know, uh, our alternative budget uh, details the, the, the different uh, ways in which this money is stolen. So one of the things we are saying is that if we are able to put in place robust systems to deal with corruption, yeah. and especially if there's political will to deal with the question of corruption, then you'll find that that money can go into the right uh, priorities. Of course, the other thing that we talk about uh, and which we've been passionate about is looking at uh, the priorities that we have as a country. Yeah. And, and we're saying that, first of all, you're spending trillions on uh, the security sector, and yet the lives of uh, the, our men and women in uniform have not improved. You, you can see where the police officers live in this country, and uh, y yet uh, you know how much money they earn. And yet, these people buy from the same markets, from the same supermarkets, like every, every other person. So we are saying that if you are spending all this money on the security sector, first of all, it should be reflected in the lives of the men and women in uniform. You should not be spending trillions, and a lot of it goes in classified expenditure on operations that uh, people don't even know about. You, you, today you're in uh, the DRC, the following day you're where, you're all over the place. And of course, uh, uh, you, you saw a letter uh, Genom 7 recently wrote to the IGG saying that do not even ask the soldiers to declare their wealth, which means that if money is lost, uh, whatever they call classified expenditure, the IGG has no capacity to even follow up, to investigate, even when uh, the IGG actually has a mandate under the laws of Uganda to investigate all these forms of corruption. So we are saying that, one, we need to redress the, 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 the sectors. Uh -huh. Agric the agricultural sector, which employs more than 75% of our people, and look, look at the money that goes into agriculture vis-a-vis -vis the one that goes into other sectors. And we're saying that let's put our money where it comes from, the people who are paying taxes. Mm -hmm. When you are collecting this money from uh, the poor people out there, the peasants and all that, make sure that this money goes back to them to empower them and make sure that they are able to really, really, um, you, you give them a hand up in terms of uh, their lives and that kind of thing. So our alternative budget tries to address the question of uh, poverty, the poverty levels which have been growing in this country, and we want to be able to put our money, uh, the, the national resources, where the people of Uganda are. And we're saying that we should invest in infrastructure. I've just been telling you about the, the, the problem of traffic, that e every year we lose 52 days, working days at that, due to uh, b uh, the, the traffic uh, jam in, in this country. So you can just imagine if we're able to invest in infrastructure, make sure that uh, uh, we have proper roads. Uh, uh, it, one of the factors that causes uh, this traffic <coughs> is even the potholes on our roads. You're just driving very carefully because you don't want to rush, and then to, uh, you, by the time you reach where you're going, okay. your car is broken down. All so right. anyway, the, the, our budget addresses many, many things. I cannot mm. go through all of them. But just to, to quickly say that the theme of this year's bu budget is mm -hmm. focusing on human rights. Uh, human rights best approach to budgeting. And that is uh, civil and political rights and economic, social, and cultural rights. We are saying that instead of uh, looking at human rights as just uh, uh, civil and political rights, people have been tortured and all that, all human rights are important. And some of them, access to water, access to food, access to electricity, and all these things are very important for us. Looking at the budget and uh, hearing the Secretary General speak, we are not hearing anything new. Yeah. with what National Unity Platform has been uh, uh, talking of right from the election time. Yeah. This was an opportunity for you to roll out policy implementation framework yeah. in order to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. What we have here is a juxtaposition of what the government says and what you say. We want to hear and know exactly how infrastructure projects must be rolled out, how the approach to human rights plays into the implementation of other policy with regard to either local governments or even uh, you know, uh, the push for tier and revenue collection. How is this going to be achieved? Read the budget, read the statement. It's, You're here very on clear. national TV. And, and, and I'm, 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 trying to tell I'm telling the audience, mm. but like I'm saying, if you read every sector, mm. we have uh, the, the leader of uh, the, the office of the leader of the opposition has detailed mm. plans on how to address each of that. 
First of all, we have said, for example, that it should not be, it, it, it's criminal and, and, and morally wrong that in this country it is the poor people who are paying taxes and then you hear the rich being exempted, okay. big companies being exempted. And we're saying that every person in this country should pay their fair share of taxes. The how is what we want. Just implement it. Simple. Don't give tax waivers mm -hmm. to uh, investors who come here, uh, most of them connected to the uh, people in power. We're saying everyone should pay, and, and that is the how. It is just about changing policies and mindset. <coughs> to change priorities. This is an alternative budget. Mm. Where are you budgeting? And uh, So we're saying that if we are in power, if any of you has to be in power today, mm. we would change the priorities. And, and, and the priori if once you change the priorities, you're able to improve substantially the lives of the people of Uganda. And okay. that is the how. All right. Honorable, have you read the alternative budget uh, via your position? Well, like you, yeah, I always want to know. So I interested myself mm -hmm. on the day they presented. What's your But you have just, take? yeah, you just asked yeah, the Secretary General of NUP that what exactly. The challenge we have in this country is being and dragging into activism politics. We are not in elections. The NRM we've just been voted two and a half years ago, so we are still having the mandate to serve the people. When you look at our manifesto, we have put priorities. You have asked him a technical question. They have 50-something members of parliament. Instead of making big press conferences and having table to talk, the 50-something members of parliament in the NUP, they're in charge of appropriation. Why do, he has just told you about the potholes. The other day, the Government Assurance Committee met with KCCA. We have members of the NUP there. If you're talking about potholes in Kampala, what are the roles of these members of parliament? You asked him, they how? They will be appropriating because they have a right and they have the mandate. They have a, even a duty to support a supplementary budget to bring on the floor of parliament so that, because if he says when we come to power, when? You have your members of parliament who are in the other arm of government, so they are part of government. If they would do proper legislation, they would be prioritizing. When we started this parliament, they did the same thing. There is a saying I was looking, I was trying to see how I can translate it direct in English. But in Uganda, they say, wait a go, Sirike. In, in, in the opposition, these guys are into to quit and they keep quiet. They always want to find something. They started with a legislative agenda. The leader of government, I mean the leader office of the leader of opposition in parliament. They had still a very beautiful press conference where you guys came and attended, covered, gave them a very big press. It ended. If you do assessment on their legislation, because that's what we would expect them to do now. Let us assess. We started on the legislative agenda when the 11th parliament started. And they started on a good note. Actually, as government, we are somehow challenged. We're like, if the opposition can give us this alternative on the legislation, they will be now assessing their members of parliament. Within these two and a half years, where have we gone short? What can we do better? But coming, coming with this alternative budget, these are documentaries. These are things that they can want to Continue. They are like in the disco. They always bring another song to play. They politicize. <laughs> now, let, let him respond to that. Of course, I don't my, know if he my, knows. My cobbler would say, oh, could be no, respond. no, does he know the role of an MP? First I of all. do come on. I'm no, a member of parliament. But you I see, know. it does yeah, not. No, the fact that you are a member of parliament does uh -huh. not actually mean that you know no, the role of a member of parliament. I do. Just now, he has the said, question. we have, we have 57 members of parliament. Yes. yes. And, and if we have 57 members of first of all, spread across committees. This here, what they have done is proposing alternatives that is why we are calling we are called the alternative government of course right. he says the one elections we all know uh, how, how, how uh, uh, wrong that statement is uh, in, in, in factual terms but the most important thing is that the role of the leader of opposition mm -hmm. under the rules and under the law is to propose alternatives which is right it's my and that is why law. that There's is why solution that's what i'm saying one country. we have we have uh, suggested uh, alternatives but secondly the tyranny of the numbers because mm. they are able to rig elections and have uh, all these members of parliament even when we want to push certain things uh, through the legislative agenda of the country, many, many times they will not allow you to do that. So if, when you say that uh, we have members, of course, our members who are in charge of accountability committees, they are every day greeting government officials. Why? Because you, you are in charge of appropriation. In, mm. in the, the, the NRM caucus, actually. The uh, parliament. Not no, the no, no, I'm, I'm talking about the NRM caucus. What were you doing about the budget? Why, why were you discussing the budget? As the NRM caucus, it is simply because of the tyranny of the numbers. They say we have these priorities. But even if, 
And let me say this again. Even if we're able to allocate all these funds to the relevant sectors, does that money do what it is mandated to do? Then I've MPs, just talked about... Your MPs should do the oversight. That's and they have been doing it. They have been doing it. That is, that, that, this is part of the oversight. Mm. When we come up with an alternative and say that we are losing 10 trillion shillings, some of, the, of this information comes from government agencies like the Office of the IGG, the Office of the Auditor General. And they are saying our country is bleeding that all the resources that are put in place to improve roads, to improve healthcare, to improve education, etc., etc., this money is stolen by uh, uh, the, the thieves in government. And so what do you expect us to do? To come and arrest them? It is your mandate as a government to go and arrest the thieves, uh, to prosecute them, and to ensure that uh, there is accountability to the citizens. All right. Allow, uh, me, allow me read. Maybe uh, before that, uh -huh. I needed to give some information. Okay, very, uh, quick, very quickly. Uh, because I'm in Parliament. First of all, I would like to inform the Secretary General that I'm a member of Parliament at my age who doesn't have any program of dying tomorrow. So I have a responsibility <laughs> to see that this country moves <laughs> forward. Now, they have ministers within Parliament. Excuse they have me. a cabinet. Before we continue with mm. this conversation, let's not take God is what? Place. No, we are God. No, we are created in the no, image I'm, of God. I know. When mm. you say you have no program. Yeah, yeah I don't have. It's a, a bit arrogant. No, 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 no. Especially no. when it comes to the fact that an average Ugandan there is grappling with a lack of medicine and could pass no, on no, tomorrow. No, 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 no. Yeah. I want yeah. to give you hope. I spent 14 years in the yeah. seminary. I would be a parish priest of maybe one parish within Kampala Diocese. You must agree with me. So, so this is, we yeah. are all created in the image of God and we are in God liking. Because if we go into that direction, I would just need now no, to I have scriptures I'm, and... I'm not an and, expert and in theology yeah. and I cannot even attempt to do so that. So I spent 14 years in the seminary so when i talk about something i don't want just to open my all mind. right you're not but, in the program of dying but, but uh, i you was i was I, wa I wanted to inform the secretary general mm. now that his members of parliament the opposition people have a cabinet a shadow cabinet mm. and they lay alternative policies on the flow of parliament that is where legislation is done it's good this is mandated by the and actually we are very happy that for the first time this is the first uh, lead of opposition to present because we've been having very many mm -hmm. we are not saying as government we are not at will to be checked no but instead of coming out to lament and yet you have leaders in parliament that are the biggest they are on the biggest arm of government and their role is to appropriate and make policies we would like you to challenge us tell us we have, they have come up with such policies and government is not implementing. We are in charge of bringing government business on the floor of parliament mm. and being checked. There is no problem. And have you done it? country in the multiple, yes, we are. Are unless, we not doing it? Unless you, have, you are sleeping in a different country. And that's what I'm saying, are we not doing it? We appreciate the role and that's the level of multi-party democracy that we have in this country. That you challenge out, we are only demanding you to stop politicizing activism politics when this country needs serious things to be attended to. Uh, we see. are not into politics all the time. You have leaders. I would not expect a secretary general of the party to come here and lament. Call your caucus in the NUP. Let like we respond. do. But and discuss uh, and yeah, Let him respond. The point I'm making is, yeah. and our president, uh, uh, President Chagulani sent him, mm. at the budget speech made a very important statement. He said that all these proposals that we are making will, will just be shelved if we continue to have a regime that does not respect the law, which, 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 which is illegitimate in the first place. But and we are, saying, we are saying that the only way we can implement this mm. is if we're in power. Because, you know, this country has some of the best policies and laws shelved somewhere. If you go and read the different reports, because Ugandans are smart people, there have been different laws uh, or reports, even uh, documents written about how to help our education sector, how to improve the healthcare, but they are just shelved. So this is one of those things that we have uh, come up with as a challenge, to say this is how our country should be running. But you need <coughs> to understand that we can only implement these things when the people of Uganda are in charge of their country and therefore are able to decide how to appropriate what the priorities are. Uh, um, you know, uh, like I'm saying, you, cannot, you, ca you can come up with all these proposals, like our shadow ministers have been doing. They come up with all these alternative proposals, but they cannot go through if these people using the tyranny of numbers are able to ensure that those policies do not go through. And like I'm, I'm saying, our parliamentary front has been doing its role in terms of oversight. They have been doing its role in terms of uh, coming up with alternatives. But most of the times, those just remain 
on the shelf. They, they have, they have uh, spoken about many things. When uh, you, you remember when Rocco was given uh, what, what I would call a windfall. Mm. Do you remember our, our parliamentary team Bailout. put up a strong, strong resistance against that? Our parliamentary team has been speaking out against these tax exemptions that are, you know, dished out to, to the cronies of the regime. But nothing is happening. So that is why I, I, so I get surprised when he calls it politicking. Yeah, it's not it's politicking. It's what we are doing is to say that we can only implement these things when our country has better governance. Is it uh, prudent to ask you how, for example, the National Unity Platform would respond to the current economic uh, challenges that the country is facing? On average, when you go down to the people, you find that people are hardly affording daily, you know, uh, the stuff to eat. Much of it has not reduced in price despite uh, petrol and uh, fuel reducing significantly to the extent that uh, transport costs must be able to lower. If you were to tackle the current economic crisis as the National Unity Platform, this is a question perhaps that would be going to your shadow finance minister mm -hmm. to be able to articulate it, but we do think that the Secretary General has been briefed <coughs> enough ah. on how best this can be achieved. I don't even need to be briefed. I know the problem of Uganda and how it can be solved. Just one word, priorities. Priorities, my brother, that is the solution to this country's economic crisis. Put your money where the people are. I've just told you, for example, uh -huh. that the agriculture sector, which uh, employs more than 75% of the people, and you know now they've come up with PDM, a completely uh, useless program for oh. a better word and you'll see in a short while they're going to also shelve it like they've shelved the others you, you know in Tandikwa you know Bonaba Gagawale they came up with uh, all sorts of things every elective term they've been coming up with something the other day they were doing something called Emioga now they're on PDM but if you read uh, the alternative budget but also read our, our manifesto of 2021 we give solutions we're saying that uh, the farmers out there need certain things, and those are the things that you should be looking at. Mm. The country is not one homogeneous thing. There are, different, there are differences. If you go to Busoga and you go to Bugisu, the farmers there need different interventions. And we're saying that those should be where, that is where sh our priorities should be in terms of budgeting, and, uh, and that is what would, would help us deal with the economic crisis. That okay, we time is not our best ally, but allow me to ask the Honorable Member of Parliament, after reading the alternative budget presented by the Leader of Opposition in Parliament, and looking at the budget rollout and implementation of uh, that is undergoing by the Ministry of Finance under the aegis of uh, Matia Kasaija, is there anything you think that Matia Kasaija, uh, Ramadan Gobi, and all the honchos at the finance ministry can be able to quickly adopt in order to either streamline or improve what is already being rolled out in terms of the national budget uh, that was read? Uh, before I would answer that, I needed to inform the public, and these people are not and uh, are not we should not create a perspective that they are not informed they watch every time the sittings are on mm. and the most people should go and they answered the most people that are legislating they are members from the opposition every day when we sit from tomorrow to thursday mm. when we check most s some of them are the very same of the same same faces same that are legislating i'm surprised that the secretary general is not observant on that probably as even supposed to, to tell him congratulations because you opposition members of and they are doing the work they are supposed to do we shall be asking but coming, but coming whether, just a minute we shall be asking him when we return from the break whether there is a scorecard by the national unity platform on how those mps and are performing our MPs are speaking. and all also answer the question yeah, yeah, whether there is anything you. within yeah, yeah. the alternative budget course, that the national resistance movement or even the executive <laughs> can do copy but that is after the break let's go for a break now the discussion does continue right after do stay with us welcome back for those that went with us into the break if you're just joining us we are glad to have you on board it's the kickstarter leg of morning at ntv and we are discussing three issues the opposition's alternative budget we are asking the question <coughs> is it feasible we also analyzed the recent caucus meeting of the national resistance movement and also the inquiry into the iron sheets now let me give an opportunity to the minister not minister I beg your pardon the mp for kagoma north to tell us the issues or issues aspects within the alternative budget that he sees fit to be adopted now in 
ensuring that the economy gets back on its feet? Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate and thank the Office of the Leader of Opposition for the very first time to share. Mm. And this is the level of multi-party democracy and freedom of expression that we have. And I really hope that we, sh we shall be given an opportunity on the order paper to discuss because that's how parliament works. Mm. They gave the alternative budget, but we shall have to discuss it on the floor of parliament and digest. When you look at the issue of human rights, who doesn't want human rights? Because today I'm a member of parliament, tomorrow I'm not. Uh, we have had seen government officials that have been also um, affected by the same. When our, our, when our two members of parliament were put in prison, we all got concerned. So uh, we really look, we take it serious because human rights is very fundamental. And if they have that and it's focused to people to have their rights of education, rights, financial stability, as government we appreciate. And we, as we discuss, we shall definitely adopt. When you look at appropriation, when you look at uh, priorities, we are glad as government and as members of the NRM that our, our, our colleagues, especially the opposition can join us to address the only issue is when they just have to talk and it ends there in papers and it just ends there because it's, a, it's, it's mandated in our rules of procedure and they have fulfilled obligation it stops there but we'd also call upon them that let them come especially with these members of parliament to create a clear picture for because we all need to move but we agree and we really appreciate the document. Once given an opportunity on the floor of parliament to discuss, we shall discuss this budget extensively because we are all Ugandans, mm. irrespective of our political affiliations. And we know that people in opposition, they are doing for the betterment of this country. Okay. And that's why if you follow parliament proceedings, if there is a serious issue, the lead of opposition is given the second last chance to crown and then the, the, the lead of government business. So that, that shows you that as a legislative arm, we appreciate, we don't uh, underlook the efforts of our members uh, of the opposition because they were elected by the people. And we hope and believe that these are reflections of voices from our voters. And this is a country, when we go to, to Kitugumu, we want to have the same services that you have in Kampala, or we have in Kagoma, or you may have in Imbarara. So we appreciate, and we shall take it serious, because these are voices of Ugandans, mm. and people have a stake I in this that's, country. Uh, when uh, Rubangoya listens to you, I think he agrees that there is need to discuss that particular alternative budget on the floor of uh, parliament. Definitely. No doubt about that. I don't know whether the leader of opposition, during the presentation, shared that timeline on how it's going to be done. Is it a of seeking uh, no, he, he, well, he didn't but I'm sure there's uh, there's a plan yeah it's a uh, procedure right. issue okay. within the rules all right so it has timeline and you will definitely okay uh, now bring talk it. to us about two issues the first one and uh, should be quick about that is the scorecard for the national unity platform <laughs> legislators how are you monitoring their work yeah. because earlier in the uh, as we were discussing there appeared to be a bit of gray area or no how the how they are working on especially appropriation on their various committees but also take us through the plan within that <coughs> about the healthcare system yeah yeah so the first on, on the first question um i did mention that uh First of all, I agree with him that our members of parliament are doing them uh, in terms of debate, in terms of uh, uh, being able to articulate issues on the floor of parliament. Mm. Uh, the challenge, the only challenge, like I said, the tyranny of numbers, because yes, uh, the, the most of the work is done through the committees mm. of parliament where some of our members are. But you see that, for example, on, the, on, uh, on, on, the, on those critical committees, because of our numbers, which, like I was pointing out very seriously, are uh, gotten through illegitimate means, you find that some of our proposals which are, which are so dear to us, they are not able to be included in this, uh, in, in the national budget at the end mm. of the day. You remember, for example, the budget committee was uh, interfacing with uh, uh, the Ministry of, of Defense and Veteran Affairs uh, recently. And there was a gray area around uh, Operation Shuja and all that kind of thing. Our members were insisting, let the information come through. But of course, using uh, the chairpersonship of the committee, the tyranny of numbers, our people were not able to get what they wanted because we are saying, first of all, uh, our country cannot be spending all these monies on uh, an operation that was not formally communicated to Parliament with, in terms of objectives, in terms of the timelines, etc. etc. Now, to your second question about healthcare, we are saying, first of all, that uh, the money that we spend on healthcare is, is too small. 
the Maputo protocol says that every country should at least spend 15% of their national budget on health care. Mm. And we are far below that. And we are saying that if we can implement that, then we are able to ensure that, for example, at every level, national, uh, every regional referral hospital, we have the equipment that is needed. We have uh, x-ray, we have uh, uh, CT scans, we have uh, <coughs> uh, cancer, uh, the, the radiology machines that we don't have, that, that people only come to Mulago for, and all these things. So the, the, only, the, the whole point is about prioritization. The whole point is about budgeting, ensuring that we spend a lot of money on healthcare, upgrading the uh, healthcare facilities that we have all across the country. If you get an accident in uh, Guru, most likely, and you need, uh, you know, uh, an MRI scan or whatever, you may find that you need to be driven up to Kampala to get access to a proper MRI scan. What kind of uh, a joke is that? You remember during COVID days, people would uh, have to be uh, driven from all sorts of places to Kampala to have access uh, to oxygen, to, to be able to get uh, ICU or high dependency unit services. So we're saying that if we can spend that money, the 15% of our budget mm -hmm. on healthcare, then we'll be able to upgrade uh, the healthcare right. services. Very quickly, you'll be uh, responding to that. Don't worry about it, but just yeah. give me the education plan. Same thing. We want to be able to invest enough funds in uh, the education sector, uh, but also um, one of the critical things that uh, uh, the Office of the Leader of the Leader of has talked about mm. is uh, revamping inspectorate services. You know, when we were growing up, we had inspectors of schools who were respected. Now, y y they, they have just been turned into uh, corruption m uh, machines. Someone comes, you, they, they, they just hound people, and the RDCs, of course, have, uh, for the better part, taken over this role. We are saying that we need to go back to prioritization of the, of the education sector. And as NUP, mm -hmm. those are, by the way, the two sectors, the healthcare and education that we, we think, in terms of public services to the people, mm -hmm. we should emphasize. Uh, uh, one of the things I did not talk about healthcare is the national uh, insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Healthcare coverage for all citizens in the, in the country. Uh, Rwanda has taken a lead. Uh, Kenya is doing very well on, on that re on that, in that regard, of course. They haven't reached uh, the levels uh, we, we desire to be. But we're saying that we need to roll out a health cover insurance plan for all the citizens of this country. Listening to that, Honorable, do you see the need to quickly adopt? But most importantly, your take on uh, the country's health care system. Before we appreciated the technology, we used to write love letters. And in these love letters, <laughs> you would only write what is exciting the girl. But you must follow it with the action. This is what they are doing, writing love letters and talking. He's telling you about health. This government, unless Lubongwea stays in a different state in Uganda, but if he's not aware, well, I would like to inform him that every parish, this government has a health center. <laughs> what they will be doing now, instead of crying within their MPs, these words he's telling us will be telling them in their NUP caucus, saying, you MPs, appropriate, how do we upgrade these health centers well, at the parish level? That? Because Just that's now government. Yeah. When we talk about education, we have every sub-county has a CD school. We have universal free education up to university level. Mm. His role would be whipping his NUP members of parliament. Let, like he's talking about appropriation uh, priorities. Then let us increase. Because we have the mandate as parliament. Let me ask Unless you he's not aware that his NUP have you, the mandate. Let me ask you this and give me an honest qu answer on this. There was an incident in which the Minister for Information, uh, Dr. Chris Bariomosi, was uh, reported to have uh, fainted or collapsed. Mm. And then within the confines of the region he was, there wasn't a facility good enough mm -hmm. uh, to accommodate or to attend to. I don't know whether it's to attend to him as a minister and was I or lifted, to attend actually. to anybody who faints or mm. collapses for that matter. Later when we saw the pictures of the hospital, it was appalling. When you say there is a health center every in parish every parish in of this, this country, country, yes, aren't you simply saying there is a, either a building or a structure? Do you look at the provision of healthcare services as beyond a structure? 
Of course, I look. I am, like I told you, the, um, okay. I'm around and I see. Mm. That's why I'm challenging him. That the love letter no, is telling you, us. Challenge, challenge yourself no, and no, the no, National no. Resistance Movement. We have members. In light of Chris, Dr. Chris yes, Madewo's yes, scenario. Yes, yes, We are members of parliament who are in charge. If mm. you talk about priorities, mm. what they will be discussing, how do we improve and add? I agree. I see where I come from. We don't have, save for us MPs that can buy ambulances. That's why I told that we are of the lower government. We have taken over. But we have not only taken over, but we are in government. So those facilities, like they keep on saying, let's, here I just gave you an example. Like in Kenya, in Tanzania, when will you stop referring and be practical to work? That's what I, I'm also challenging them, that they would, like they gave us their legislative agenda, they'll be looking at priorities. Mm. As they stand on the floor of parliament, we say, let us add money here. Like would appreciate when I saw here KCCA, I live in this city, mm. and I live in Kampala also. I have some property in Kampala. I would love to sell in a city like other those cities that we go out and see. Mm. So if they would not put on, on paper, they have a minister of finance who is very well uh, uh, educated. They have mm. some good members of parliament. If you gave me an opportunity to name them. So no. instead of them crying not and lamenting here in Dutch, writing these love le letters, let them with <laughs> their members <laughs> to make sure they give priority. You to an ambulance. You, you, you bought an ambulance for your community, right? Yeah. MPs, uh, how many how MPs. many ambulances are within the district where your well my is? my my district is slightly very small mm -hmm. so we have and the, the, the government policy is that every health center for there is an ambulance and such ambulance that you are showing they are there now all the ambulances I'm talking about mm. are they government or MPs are bought for no the we have government ambulances we have private health practitioners that have private f uh, facilities with the ambulances, but we have government ambulances. And we just rolled out almost <coughs> every constituency was given an ambulance at a, a policy level. So what they would be doing now, that let us add, instead of crying and not giving a solution, if you're let watching, us give money if into you're this watching health the program sector. And uh, you're in Kagoma North County, and uh, you can share with us some of this information, please, on Twitter. Oh, yeah. You can go to at Chris Higeni, you can DM a picture or two, of uh, the ambulances at the parish where not at the parish at I did because that's not a government policy I said okay. that health cent we have health a center for in Wenge town well, council mm -hmm. there is an ambulance we have a district hospital at Kaguma they have an ambulance okay time is N not N no, 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 I just quick round allow, allow me give you the opportunity to wrap this up and then now uh, we go to Stephen Mbide who is uh, standing by on a very critical issue of course one is that <laughs> Ugandans who are watching us know if they have health centers in their yeah, parishes. We do. They they are not there. We just and uh, the, the, the Guardian the Guardian did a, a report here and found parish uh, sub counties where you find that one out of six parishes has a health center. And, and you know this that in many, many parishes in this country there are no health centers at I all. I can offer a trip and to those and, and the those but you, and you, you, you don't even need right, to give please. me a, a Ugandans who are watching us know you can ask them. But also the Ugandans use these health services. Th only 30%, according to a study, of the population actually use those health centers, uh, which have apparently, uh, which, which are supposed to be, which, which are supposed to have free health services. Why? There are no drugs. Uh, the health workers there are not motivated. Okay. That is if they are there. In some places, there are no health, uh, health workers all at right. all. So how can you even come to, I really, why, why should an MP be buying an ambulance? How much have they increased in their budget for the health workers? Why should, why should, why should, why should, why should an MP mm -hmm. be buying an ambulance in this country? Why not? If it's a service. You see, that's what I'm saying. The, the, all right, the, gentlemen. It should not be a duty of an MP to buy an ambulance. It's not a duty. It should be the duty of the government of Uganda. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. This discussion will continue behind the scenes, and we can have 30 minutes or so uh, to be able to figure out and uh, put Mr. Mm. Honorable Kagoma to the task. We need to go to Kagoma County. Oh, yeah, see sure. Some of these welcome. ambulances that are being rolled out, not by the government, by the government but by the, uh, by the honorable members of parliament.